Uh, thank you for joining us again. That's a fact, yo. Thanks for having me. You know the vibes, man. We're all so low. We outside every day, 24-7. You know, I just wanted to talk about your new single dropping tomorrow with DDG. Um, yes, how did the collaboration come about? See, my son, DDG, he had um, replied to my Instagram story, Bumper Pinocchio or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he was like, that's his favorite song or whatever. So I'm like, word, that's fire for me. Because I, I like DDG music or whatever, but he had hit me on the green. And we just got connected through Instagram. And we linked up in Cali after that. We did cut, we did two songs already. So you feel me? It was just love after that. You feel me? Going to Cali, meeting him in person. You feel me? Genuine. You feel me? I like DDG. Cool. So on um, that song called Rape Tomorrow, that shit about to be fire. Like, we got the video dropping too. You heard? You feel me? So we're going to have the audio and the visual. Shit about to go viral. What was the vibe like uh, in the studio working with DDG? They cool, calm, collective, you feel me? We freestyling, so it's like everything genuine, everything natural, nothing forced. So we in a booth, back to back, rapping, you feel me? So crazy, because he recorded outside the booth. We didn't even go inside the booth. We outside, the, like, we, we didn't even go to the booth. I'm dead. You know, usually you go in the stool, you go inside the booth, whatever. Mm-hmm. But we went out, we, we just stayed where we was at and just recorded then and there, right next to the engineer. Oh, that's that's better crazy. like that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's like exciting when like whatever you know is coming to your head or whatever you're like freestyling is like so fire or like you know, you know it's gonna be so fire that you can't even wait. Like you can't walk you gotta do it right yeah. now. Right like, do it then because sometimes you forget what you about to say. Mm-hmm. It, it just and that make you feel crazy, like especially when you forget the best line you ever thought of. Yeah. Mentally that shit mess with you on go line. So you just like nah, let me record right now, like <laughs> So with most of your music or like in general, uh, would you say that you freestyle or have you like, do you write, do you do both? All right, so with my music, like I do both. Like I could freestyle or I write, it depends on what the beat is. I ain't gonna lie. Like some beats I'll be feeling faster than other beats. Like it take me a while to understand the beat. So, yeah. like, the beats I understand fast, I'll be writing fast, freestyle, I ain't gonna lie. So what's cool about, you know, you working with DDG on this track is the fact that both of you guys came from, like, um, establishing yourself in one lane, which is both, mm-hmm. like, both like comedy and skits and stuff. And I know he, yeah. you know, he used to play around with music, he used to play around with music before you guys, you know, fully, like, switched lanes. But um, were you guys, like, what was, like, the chemistry like in general? Were you guys, like, goofing around a lot? Like, did you guys record anything, like, any funny content? Mm-hmm. Now, like, I ain't gonna lie, when we linked up, it was on some music shit, like, you feel me? It's like, we understood the passion we had for music. We, we free. It's like, I ain't gonna lie, when you an artist, we stay in artist lane. Like, sometimes mm-hmm. we don't even come out that lane unless it's, like, it's, it's coming to us. Like, so, for example, like, if we was in a position where, like, we was about to do a skit, it'd probably be somewhere outside the studio. Like, when we was in the studio, it was more like, we was on some music time, and, like, we was fully focused. You didn't really get any time together. Nah, not no fun shit yet. But he cool though. Like, yeah. like we was doing a video shoot or whatever. We would crack a little jokes or whatever. You know what I mean, a little, little joke. He funny though. That's a fact. You guys <laughs> do some like skits together or some. I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Like you guys would be really funny together. Oh yeah, we definitely was talking about doing a little YouTube things together. Like, yeah. Little, yeah. that's a fact. Like I, I'm in his vlog or whatever on YouTube. So, and we play ball. We playing ball together. So. That's dope. That's a fact. So shout out to DDG. So can you tell us a little bit about what else you have on the way? Swag like Mike too. Oh I really? Gotta, Already? Yeah. Okay, that's dope. Yeah, fast. We about to turn the value up. I ain't gonna lie. I'm about to give people. I'm about to give people what they want. So I'm about to have like twelve songs on this shit. I'm about to have, I got me and Rod Swish. We about to go crazy too. Uh, me and Rod Swish got a banger together. Shout out to Brooklyn because Brooklyn to me they be showing mad love. So. I got a song with Ron Swiss right now called R.S. Man, I got a couple singles for me, but I'm about to have a challenge ready for TikTok. After oh, really? DDG. Anyone? Yeah, for TikTok for um, the rave song with me and DDG. You've obviously blown up off of, like, you know, your viral, like, skits and, like, doing challenges. Um, How calculated is it? Like... Do you plan this before the song comes out? Obviously, you know, you have a plan mm-hmm. with, a, like, a rollout with the single with DDG, but yeah. how much, like, consideration goes into, like, 
the dance or like, you know, starting a challenge with the song or does it kind of happen organically from like mm -hmm. the fans afterwards? Or what do you like happening yeah. more? Sometimes it depends on what the song is like Pinocchio. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like that song was more like just like organic where people thought of a challenge on their own time and like I didn't even think yeah. of a challenge. But then you got a song that you, you personally like. Like this is a song that I personally like that I feel like if if I did a challenge or two and started up, my fans will understand it. So like this is a song that I really had planned to because I feel like they they gonna understand me and DDG, like just like how you seen the whole grind aspect from him being a YouTuber and me being a comedian and yeah. doing the rap lane, it should show like growth. So like me having that whole blueprint behind that song is just the, my reason for that. For me, yeah. But you mentioned you did two records with DDG. When can we expect the next one? See the next one, we might just throw that in the cut, just like a single. You could be mm -hmm. probably no time soon though. So me, no time soon. Dropping those singles, then we're gonna jump with the tape. For me, so after the DDG. Soon, then a lot of switch soon after that, and drop the tape back like my like, two. How do you, how, how have you grown um, since starting this journey, musically and also just personally? The changes you've seen in yourself? My perspective of life, you heard, like, when I first started, was looking at, like, I want to be in a movie or I want to, I want a million views, you feel me? Like, my mindset was a little different now where I see a bigger picture, you heard, like, now. I want to take over the whole world. Yeah. For me, I'm trying to be the president. I'm trying to do crazy shit that I never thought I would do. You heard? So now you see me doing. I, I, I'm going to the studio doing love songs and shit. Or like, I'm trying to do shit. I'm trying to go crazy right now. So definitely, like, it opened my eyes. Like that, I got the potential to do whatever I put my mind to. You heard? What's one piece of advice you have for an aspiring rapper? You gotta be yourself. You heard? Facts. A lot of time, niggas rap for different reasons. People rap because they it look cool. Niggas rap because it's trending. But sometimes, if you a rapper, you gotta understand you rap because you want your voice to be heard too. So you just gotta be yourself and stay true to yourself. It's gonna come to you. No and cat. Do you do you feel like going viral today is necessary in order for like an artist to blow up? like either with the challenge or getting like a million streams and views or do you feel like it's still possible without you know that happening nah it's 2020 so we gotta understand like social media is a big impact for the whole world and the community that we live in it. and the generation that we come from right now i'm 20 so the people that we look it up to right now they all social media so nobody go make it unless they all social media like go like you gotta have a, a set fan base in order to make it because like how people gonna believe your movement if nobody following behind it, you heard? Mm -hmm. So you definitely gotta have that ready. Like, I seen a lot of niggas gotta get signed, you heard, just to get it lit, mm -hmm. you feel me? That's how life is, you feel me? A lot of niggas get signed, get lit, people do different shit, you feel me? Obviously you're independent. How important do you think it is today um, for an artist to sign to a label? Do you feel like, you know, there are some artists who need it more than others, or do you feel like everyone can really make it being independent? Um, I mean, everybody's circumstances is different. Like, some people, like, sign deals because they really need money for their purposes, whatever the case may be. It's a faster route. And, like, me, I felt like I was, I, my mom was already advanced at the age, like, 12 and shit. Like, I already knew what type of what format I wanted and blueprint I had. So, the mindset I was coming up with, Mm -hmm. It was independent. You feel me? I didn't. I didn't share with any labels. Like so, I knew what I wanted to do off rip. For me, so a lot of people don't have that mindset going up. They just they want to make music, but they don't know how to get there. You feel me? So I knew the steps to take. You feel me?